friends, welcome back to the Brave New Wear Show. My name's Christian. Films are inspired by contemporary fashion. That's just the nature of movies. Fashion is something that regular old people wear every day. Films are inspired by what reg old people are doing. However, sometimes the shoe is on the other foot. Sometimes film and TV inspire fashion brands. So I'm gonna go through some runways, some new collections, and you can hear what I think about it. Let's get into it. Uh, if you're new, subscribe to the channel. Vote for me for best dressed in the yearbook. And consider joining the Patreon. I'm dropping new content on there that you're missing out on. So if you want to stop being a loser, you should join the Patreon. Let's get into it. Hollywood, that's Ruby Valley, Ruby Hollywood. 424, an American Psycho. Um, so 424, the LA brand, streetwear brand, recently announced like a capsule collection inspired by the film American Psycho. And you can see in the first picture of the lineup, they literally got like Christian Bale's head on this model showing the coat. Now, I'm gonna go through some that aren't good. And I honestly think the 424 one is an example of that because it's like, well, honestly, it's like this isn't what, like this doesn't really feel inspired by the movie as much as it feels like it's taking some little quirky elements of iconography and transplanting them onto their streetwear garments. Like the second picture with the model with the slicked back hair kind of feels like American Psycho in some way to me, I don't know. I think the t-shirt is cool, I would wear that t-shirt. But like the second picture showing the back of the jumpsuit, it's just like, that's not a Patrick Bateman outfit. And the same could be said throughout the whole collection, these full suits. Now I do, for whatever reason, think they're kind of cool, even though they look like the clothes that Sterling Ruby's making right now, but the last pieces are just like, they're totally not in any kind of connection with the movie. So this is a thumbs down. Number two, Etude and Terminator 2, Judgment Day. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> Take it. Oh. Terminator 2 is like one of my favorite action movies of all time. And personally, I think that Sarah Connor has some real fit moments that we could be inspired by. But the collection by Etude's Etude, no way. The first piece is a sweater that's kind of cool. I mean, it's coolish. But then the rest of the pieces are kind of like 90s nostalgia, like a publicity sort of garments. Don't really resonate with the movie or feel inspired by it. The hat that that one model is wearing with like the uh, embroidered stuff on it. Maybe it's a combination of the font the subject in the model, but it just screams to me like Demna. Like this is something that Demna has already done for Balenciaga for a few years and nothing about it really feels that novel. And I feel like I would be the prime like audience. I love that movie unironically and I like fashion, but I wouldn't spend the money on these garments. So thumbs down. You know, like to be clear, one of the things that the last two brands aren't doing is capturing something about the film that is unique that would inspire a designer. Whether that's the themes, the motifs, the cinematography, the way that the film looks, or the way that the characters live. These two collections aren't really looking at any of those things, and they're more or less like a, it, it looks like a branded product. That's all it is. It looks like, hey, brand X, would you like us to print your brand on our garment? That's kind of what I'm getting from these last two. So why don't we go to a maestro, Raph Simmons. Me, I'm in bed. Coffee and the rest of the day, Coca Zero. That's pretty bad. So Calvin Klein by Raft, Spring Summer 2018. This was an awesome collection, and it's in part because Raph Simmons is obsessed with Americana. He's obsessed with American culture. Coca Zero. Coca Zero. This collection, more generally speaking, he described as being inspired by American horror, which is kind of like one of our MOs. 
in America is horror movies. And that is actually visible in the garments. Like, we have the one piece that is, you know, this is almost like he was looking at Carrie and tried to make a fashion version of it, but there's a lot of the garments that just seem to kind of uh, suggest the elements of American horror. You have a lot of like mid-century nostalgia, A-line skirts, combined with slasher elements like strange latex, the pom-poms, like the cheerleader pom-poms. That like just immediately screams to me the kind of vulnerability that a slasher film would try to exploit. Like uh, there was one model who wore kind of a, an opaque dress, semi-opaque dress. Not only does the hair obviously hint at this, but the idea of it kind of suggests like uh, Psycho. Next on the list, D Squared, Fall Winter 2013. Sometimes I surprise you guys, huh? You think you know everything, but I've got some secrets up here. So D Squared, the Canadian duo, had this collection in 2013. And I remember it specifically because I really liked the silhouettes. But the idea behind this collection was to be inspired by Raymond Chandler. And primarily when I think of that author, I think of The Big Sleep. He was a noir writer and The Big Sleep was a film that, or it was a book turned into a film starring Humphrey Bogart. But here's one that has everything the Falcon had and more. It's Raymond Chandler's latest bestseller, The Big Sleep. What a picture that'll make. Very big star. And the collection kind of takes the clothing or like the cultural cues in noir films and makes it vivid. Like you see like these big fedoras, almost like a Pharrell fedora. The colors that are used are so much more brighter. It's it's like it's looking at what like a hard-boiled detective would wear in these films and it's making it very extravagant. Next on the list, Undercover Fall Winter 2018. When Stanley Kubrick rapped on production of 2001 A Space Odyssey, it was reported that he demanded all of the props and set pieces from the film were destroyed. That's because he, being a crazy person, didn't want any other filmmaker to use the materials that he created for his Space Odyssey. Of course, he only reused those pieces when he went to fake the moon landing. Look it up, yeah. So that, that, that tells a lot about kind of the commitment and the, the level that Stanley Kubrick was putting into this movie. He was creating kind of a sci-fi film that was compelling from a cerebral standpoint and visually unique and bizarre. With Undercover's collection, a brand that is well-versed in prints, basically, a kind of taking those streetwear elements and also pretty well versed in adopting pop culture, they do a really interesting job of applying elements of 2001 into the garments. Specifically, I think that Undercover nailed the idea of making these prints onto things like tops and jackets. It's something that Undercover I think excels at doing and the 2001 has so many scenes that are iconic for the way that they were filmed, for the cinematography, whether it's the big obelisk thing or like the sequence with the astronauts in like the orange suit walking down the white hall. There are so many visually delicious moments in 2001 that Undercover is basically primed to adopt and like put into garments. Additionally, there are those really wild, like, space suit jackets. This is kind of something Undercover has done in the past, making kind of over, like, uh, outerwear really costumey. And I, I think that it, it still rings compelling to me and not just like a toy, because to remind you again, Stanley Kubrick saw these costumes as cutting edge. The film was so convincing that people still think that Stanley Kubrick had to be the person who helped fake the moon landing because of how compelling the props were. It wasn't like, there was no Star Wars yet. 
So I think that kind of undercover recreating those really futuristic spacesuits is in a way paying homage to the fact that those costumes were really inspirational. They were really compelling and interesting for their time and they remain so. And that's my roundup guys. Let me know what you think. Did I miss any good collections that were really inspired by fashion? Inspired by film? Let me know in the comments down below. You know, maybe I'll say something about it. Maybe I won't. And if you liked me mentioning uh, American Psycho for one second, I did release like a podcast episode, big quotes on the Patreon. I just tried it out. I was talking about American Psycho, the book and the movie. If that interests you at all, you should probably check out the Patreon because I'm going to make more content like that. So if you're interested, I don't know, check it out. And as always, peace out, guys. See you in hell.